The best way we're going to keep doing is just flipping like this and pounding that edge. There we go. I got one. We're just drifting this weed line. I just cast it straight down the weed line. I, just, I think they're right on the edge of it. Ooh, there's a nice, that's a good one. That's a good one. Come here, baby. Come here. They're certainly the <laughs> right fish. They're the right fish if we could fish them. Yeah, that guy. Beautiful fish, healthy fish. Healthy, they're just feeding on forage right along. This. They're sticking in the weeds. I think they're ducking their head in the weeds and coming back out, finding this forage base in the, in the lake. North Dakota, well known for walleyes. That's what we're doing this week. We'll come out here for a couple days and catch a bunch of these nice walleyes and fishing that six to eight feet of water, weed line walleyes with jigs and plastics, just like that. There she goes. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Oh, I got one too. I got one too. Nice. I got a, I got a spot lock here. Big fish again. Good one. Hang on, hang on, let me get her head up. She's going down. She, she, is she coming your way? All right, she can go. <laughs> Whoa, that's a nice winger here. Get her up front for you? Yeah. You know what, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I was thinking about coming up with a title for the show that we're, we're here trying to shoot. You know what we're gonna call it? Mission Impossible. <laughs> That's the name of this show, Mission Impossible. But when you get bit, it's a good one. Nice fish, man, really nice fish. That's the beauty of these North Dakota walleyes. And some, they're so fertile, the lakes grow so many big fish so fast. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> you know, North Dakota, is known for its walleye fishing. It's got a building population of muskies, a lot of smallmouth lakes, uh, great northern pike fishing, but people come here to fish for walleyes. And uh, we love North Dakota because of the size of the fish. Oh, by the way, the population of North Dakota, how many people do you think live in this magnificent state? 770,000 about. And all of the rest of it is a mecca for people that love to hunt and fish, especially big walleyes. I casted that one. If you look at this, where we're at, you know, it's tough to see unless you've got polarized sunglasses, a good pair. You can actually see the weed line as you're going along and Al's just slipping us backwards because we're, like he was saying, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. And I just cast it right down the edge of the weeds and just start working my way back as close to the weeds as you possibly can because fish are coming in and out of there finding forage to eat. As you can see, those fish are super, super healthy. Now what we're doing is ripping just BMC Moon Eye jigs. And I've got a Sensation Big Bite uh, middle bait, middle profile bait. And these things are outstanding. The nice thing about soft plastics as opposed to uh, live bait, you don't have to keep digging your hand in the, in the bait box to get one out every two seconds, especially when you're ripping. You cannot rip live bait like you can soft plastic. So this is the ticket. About 80, pushing 90 degrees. Good thing we got a little wind to cool it down. Otherwise it'd have been a roaster. But these fish here, that's some of the best bites I've had really? ever in the Dakotas. Super warm, sunny, flat calm, and these fish are up in the shallow water. Chewing. There we go, there's a the fish. Nope, pike. Piker. Uh, you're gonna catch a few pike. You're probably gonna lose a lot of lures, a lot of jigs. But North Dakota is well known for pike. Like I said, if you're gonna come out here, you better bring a lot of these things right here, jigs, because you're gonna go through them. I've already lost probably three or four of them. We've only been out here for a short time. But you know what? If you're gonna eat a pike, that's gonna be one you're gonna wanna eat anyway. And they're delicious. A lot of people think that, ah, oh, they're slimy, they smell a little funny, but this is actually one of the best table fares you can, you can get. 
And uh, if you know how to debone them, pretty darn good. That baby, that guy gave a couple of, of pulls, huh? You got to eat one, that's him. I'm Mr. Pike. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Whenever we go on a road trip, there are certain baits that we pack all the time, especially when we come to lakes uh, like we see in the Dakotas oh, yeah, that have a lot go. of multi-species uh, opportunities because you never know what you're going to bump into like today. My favorite way to catch walleyes consistently in these lakes is jigging. And three styles of baits are deadly here. Deadly, deadly, deadly. This is a, a moon, moon eye jig, four inch, slim big bite bait, slim minnow. Take a look at these colors. They got a, mar a marvelous amount of colors that walleye like. This bait sometimes is a killer. If they don't want that, they'll eat a boot tail. You always go, one guy throws the boot tail to start. This is a suicide shad. Colors made for walleye fishermen. Same thing, quarter ounce head. You can snap jig it really fast. It'll put walleyes in a boat anywhere, but particularly lakes like in the Dakotas that like to bite jigs, they're a mainstay. And you don't go anywhere without a moon tail hair jig. When this thing is on, it's like magic. Take a look down here in my jig box. Look at this. This, this is all different size jigs. A jig. This is, this is a, 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 a bag of goodies that I take with me. Look at this. Look at the, all of these hair jigs. It looks like Christmas, like Christmas tree ornaments. But the one I want to show you that was a little bit different that I, and once in a while it becomes a home run and Ty's starting to throw it, is the original bucktail jig by BMC. And they got the small ones like this. And when you bump into white bass and crappies and, and other kind of fish, this thing can be a killer. You want to see my tackle box? That's it. <laughs> That's my tackle box. Looking pretty good. Suicide shed, every color under the sun that walleyes will eat. Split tails. This is my tackle box, big bite baits, four inch split tail. Anywhere you go, you're gonna get bit on this stuff in this part of the world. So we use a lot of technical uh, gear when we're fishing and, and the rods are no different. St. Croix has long had this tournament walleye series and they've actually advanced it even more. Now this is a technique specific rod now. It's a snap jigging rod, which is what we're doing today for these walleyes. You know, they designed this all the way from the ergon ergonomically designed handle to the high-end guides to the SC4 plus carbon blank, which that blank has made this rod lighter and more sensitive, which is hard to believe. This is a six foot eight rod, which is perfect for the snap jigging application. This rod is a medium power, extra fast action, which again is perfect for snap jigging. This is fast becoming my favorite jig rod. Now for this walleye snap jigging presentation we're doing today in combination with this rod, we're using the Fuego LT2500 reel from Daiwa. This is a perfect reel for this. Uh, it's got a bigger arbor, that 2500 is really important when you're talking about using long casts and getting that line pickup for good hook sets. LT stands for light and tough, and these things are for sure super light and extra tough. So my favorite line for, for this snap jigging presentation for walleyes is definitely the 832 from Suffolk at that 10 pound range. It's a perfect line for this. I don't like that stretch in the line when I'm snap jigging. In combination with that, I've got a, a, a swivel to eliminate any kind of line twists with about a 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon, which is that advanced fluorocarbon from Suffix as well. This stuff is extremely tough and we're fishing around a lot of rock and more importantly, a lot of pike. And we've been bit off a few times, but I've actually caught probably six or seven pike. And if I wouldn't have had that fluorocarbon, I definitely would have lost more jigs. You do get eaters here too. But actually, if you go to places like Devil's Lake, and Astabula, and we're on some smaller lakes around here in North Dakota, which there's a lot of them, this is the money fish when you come to North Dakota. If you want to eat a fish, this is the perfect size at 14, 15 inch walleye. And they are delicious and the lakes in North Dakota are absolutely full of them. So if you want to come out here, have a good time, catch a lot of fish, and have the opportunity to catch a trophy of a lifetime, North Dakota is definitely the place to come.
North Dakota's abundant forage is one of the main reasons for the thriving fish populations. For starters, aquatic insects contribute to the forage base by providing a food source for all freshwater fish. And because several of the insect hatches correspond with the various life stages of fish, a continuous food supply is available throughout the different seasons. The abundant freshwater shrimp population is another reason the fish here are so healthy. These tiny crustaceans are a staple food source for many fish species, including game fish such as walleye, perch, crappies, and bass. Even toothy critters like pike eat freshwater shrimp. Fish living in North Dakota pretty much have something available to eat throughout their entire life cycle. What I got here? Looks like a crappie. Big crappies. Wow. Whoa. I wonder if that isn't what we're seeing on here. It's a nice little surprise yeah. or a big surprise. Yeah. Holy Look at cow, that. that's big. Nice crap. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. These die with drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. Incredible, 11 year warranty. I'm seeing some fish here. You're like everywhere, the crappie population is booming. <laughs> you know, you don't hear a whole lot about craps in the Dakota. Ooh, you have one? It. I just missed one, yep. Maybe we sit on, we'll forget our walleye fishing and I'll sit on a bunch of these. Here we go. Got one? Fish on. Another big crappie. Jeepers. Look at that. Holy mackerel. Oh, That's a whopper. I got a big one. Oh, another big crappie, Al. Look at this thing. Holy cow. You can almost neck that size one. This crappie. North Dakota crappies. Who would have thought? You know, I've seen big crappies out here, but this these are magnums. And look what they're biting. You, you, you usually think crappie small baits. Well, look at the size of that mouth when you're talking. That's got to be pushing 15 inches. They eat big baits too. So this little quarter ounce BMC jig with a, a big bite slim middle. I guess they catch big crappies too. Look at the size of these things. Al just caught one. That thing is enormous. These are the things that people travel far and wide for. Back in Minnesota, I mean, there's lakes over there. People to drive from the south to come up and get these things. Obviously, North Dakota's got some big crappies too, in addition to the amazing walleye fishing. If you're thinking about coming to North Dakota and have never been, got one. Never been here before, another one of them big ones. Jeepers, look at that. He was almost under the boat. And thinking about walleyes, crappies, smallmouth bass, multi-species like Ty was talking about. Look at that. This was a pleasant surprise. We didn't expect this. We got our walleye stuff and we're adapting to a hot crappie bite. I love it. Things change all the time. But you need to get this, the, the, this uh, a Lake Master chip. The chip that they have for the Dakotas, you got North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. And it is it shows you everything. You're not you're fishing blind out here unless you got that chip in, 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 in your electronics. It's amazing, amazing, and it's been upgraded. Yeah, you know, and look at their, I'm seeing these single big ones, these single big fish in here, they're the craps, Ty. You know, I was just talking about the electronics and chips and mapping, those are all amazing compared to what it used to be. But how about trolling motors? I mean, you got auto deploy, you got spot lock. Let's just talk about spot lock for a minute. I mean, you're out in wind, it doesn't matter if it's 30 mile an hour wind, spot lock will hold you right where you are. And we don't have to deal with anchors anymore. I don't even have an anchor in my boat anymore because it's such Got a pain him. in the butt. Another, another pig, <laughs> another pig. <laughs> Whoa, I'm seeing these fish on my Mega Live, single big ones, you know, spread down along this break. But man, oh man, how good it is. And we are on plan B. Like Ty said, we started with plan A was catching, you know, big, big walleyes. And we did some of that. We even got a few nice pike. 
we accidentally sent a bunch of crappies. There we go. I got one. And when that happens, big one. thank you, big Lord, one. we're going to just stay on the crappies for a little while. This is unbelievable. Like, every one is just a giant. Like, you come out to places like this, right? You, you come out on a mission to catch big walleyes, which North Dakota is very well known for. But it's also well known for, obviously, really big perch, big crappies, big pike, really good white bass. So, I mean, you could come out here and just do a multi-species mission. And I mean, why wouldn't you want to come out here and catch 14, 15 inch crappies just like that? Look at the slab on that thing. That is unbelievable. I mean, I could fish these all day. The size of that big. Whoa. Oh, got him. Oh, guess what, Ty? Another big another, crappie. Another donkey. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got You know, fights. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. <laughs> Another bag. Every one is a mag. Ugh. I downsized my tail just to, oh! I, I had a smaller, uh, I had a smaller big bite bait boot tail uh, on her. So I downsized the size a little and uh, I went to a little lighter head and it seems to be making a difference. I'm glad I brought those smaller boot tails with me. You know, some of the most popular lakes out here in the Dakotas. Uh, uh, for big, big fish is the Missouri River system and like Devil's Lake, world renowned. Then there's a lot of mid-sized lakes and reservoirs. Then there's smaller bodies of water like the one we're on now. You know, we got here to beat the wind a little bit bit today and, and I seen, a, I, I put my map chip in and looked and I seen this riprap. And I says, oh, I, I told Ty, something always lives on riprap, north, south, east or west all year long you go buy some riprap, you stop and fish it. Riprap and reservoirs go hand in hand. It's also known as shot rock, rock armor, or rubble, and is man-made placed rock or other material used to protect shorelines, stream beds, dams, bridge abutments, pilings, and other shoreline areas against erosion. Riprap can be a fish magnet, especially when the surrounding area is devoid of cover. Submerged rock attracts and holds freshwater shrimp, crawfish, bait fish, and other forage. And anytime you can locate prey, you'll often find predators. One thing I will say is we like to move fast covering these areas. If you get a bite, work that zone for a while, but keep moving. The structure is so repetitious that the fish will often move along the length of it like a highway. You just gotta crash into them. Got him. Oh, I had him, I had him, I had him. Had him, I had him, I had him. I'll spot lock again here. There's some fresh, might be the ticket, huh? Some fresh fish, like right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is so, this is so amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, yesterday afternoon, we beat up on some really, really nice walleyes, really nice borderlining on Great Lakes walleyes on the size of them. Some nice pike. And today, the day is young. We picked the lake, said, let's go look at another lake. And uh, we decided to hang out on this crappie bite. Now I'm gonna only catch maybe, maybe 10 more of these and we're gonna go back and see what the walleye bite is like on this lake. But in the meantime, I can't leave them, Ty. <laughs> I can't leave them. You're too big. Hey, if you've never come to North Dakota and you're the kind of angler that has a sense of adventure, that likes to go to new places and do new things, you got to put North Dakota on your bucket list. A bustling population of muskies being developed, big northern pike, walleye, smallmouth bass, crappies, perch, it's got everything. Put it on your bucket list, I promise you, you will be pleasantly surprised. You know, when we started Angling Edge, I really felt inspired through prayer to do closes 
with a biblical emphasis on a show about mainly my life experiences and how the Bible changed my life. And uh, that's generally what I've been doing all the time, using myself as an example and things that I've had to deal with in, in business and in relationships, personal issues, and, and how I got through many of these things and, uh, 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 and how the, the Bible is the backbone of everything that I do. And uh, it's been highly successful. I can't tell you how many notes, emails, letters, walking in restaurants, boat accesses, people come up and say, love the clothes, love the clothes, love the clothes, keep doing it. You know, and that's encouraging. That means I'm doing something right. And uh, uh, that keeps me going. You know, you say, thank you, Lord. I don't, I, this isn't pride. I'm, I'm humbled by this. It's not a prideful thing, believe me. And uh, it's interesting. There's some scripture, a scripture that's a three-part deal. It talks about somebody planting seed. And it uses a, 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 a far, farm situation as an example. Somebody plants a seed. That seed is in the ground. It's getting there. You plant the seed and it's ready to go. Then another person comes and waters that seed. And that takes the seed to another level. And then another person comes and takes that level and harvests it. What it means is, in my case, I consider myself a seed planter. That's what I do with these shows. Shows I share some things that are planting seeds so you get to thinking, wow, that's interesting. You start pursuing the things of God. That's what I do as a seed planter. Somebody else in the adventure of life, it may be a relative, a co-worker, something you see on TV, takes that seed and nurtures it. It's, it's watered, it's growing, and it goes to another level. And then the next day stage, another person comes and brings them into the kingdom through prayer and shares the story, and they're ready to make a commitment to serve the Lord. That's how God works. He's got people, places, circumstances of life going in, but it all boils down to seed planting, watering, and harvesting. I'm a, I'm a seed planter. It's that simple. I hope you receive it the way I mean it to, to, to bless you with. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water.